Hi, thank you for joining me on this test drive video for the brand new 2023 Honda Civic EHEV. Now already I'm throwing abbreviations at you. What does HEV stand for? It's a hybrid electric vehicle. So now Civic has our two motor hybrid system that is shared across the mainstream range of our vehicles. Now we are positioning this as the driver's hybrid and what we're going to do in this little video is take you on a bit of a journey so we can show you and take you through some of the technology that make it the driver's hybrid. Now one of the things that's worth pointing out before we get driving is that there are three grades of Civic. We've got the Elegance, the Sport and the Advance. Now I've got the Advance here with me today. But the, the difference, or one of the differences, is that the Elegance sits on 17-inch wheels and the Sport and the Advance are on 18s. So there may be a little bit of a difference there, but from a powertrain point of view, they're going to be absolutely identical. So, enough chatting on the outside. We've got a private road, a brand new Civic. Let's go for a drive. So now we're inside, let's get going. Now, we have keyless access on all of the three grades, so all I need to do is make sure that the key is inside the car, and to power the car up, I simply put my foot on the foot brake and press the power button, and the engine may or may not start. Remember, this is a two-motor hybrid system, so it has the ability to drive on purely electric, and sometimes it will actually power up the, the petrol engine, and that generates the electricity. However, it's going to be the electric motors that actually drive us along. So, my seat's all set up for me. I'm all good to go. I think we'll, uh, we'll change the temperature a little bit just to warm it up a bit. And I think I'll put my, uh, my wipers on as well. We'll get those into, in fact, let's put them onto the, the auto position. So, first things first, we're, we're running. Um, the engine is now powered up. But either way, even if you're in electric mode or you're in hybrid mode, you'll see a little green icon of a car on the dashboard with an arrow underneath it pointing both directions, because obviously we can go forwards or backwards, and it means we're ready to go. And the transmission is very, very simple to operate. It's like any other automatic I'm sure that you've driven before. If you want to go forward, you put it in D. You want to pop it into reverse, you just pull that little slide backwards. And of course, all three grades get the, the rear view camera, so you can see the view behind you. And of course, if you turn the steering wheel, it will actually show you the intention of where you would be going on that lock. But of course, we're going to be going forward, so I'll just pop it into park for a moment before we set off. And, and then we're really going to feel that electric motor. So remember, this is going to give us 184 PS of power and 315 Newton meters of torque. So let's get going. Just gonna, my foot's on the foot brake. I'm gonna pop it into D. The parking brake is on, but of course I've got my seat belt on, so it's automatically going to release for me. So as soon as I pop my, my foot onto the accelerator, we get going. So we're driving off in EV now, and straight in front of me, I can see a power meter. So it's just registering a tiny bit over the minimum there, and we'll get to a straight bit, and we can show you how that builds as we accelerate more. So, as I say, at the moment, all we've got is an electric motor driving us along. There's, there's no engine noise at all. I'll now put my foot down a little bit, and you can see that actually builds up, and that goes up to sort of a shade over 50% on the, uh, the power meter. As I come off the accelerator, um, a couple of things are going to happen here. Is Obviously, you're going to slow down, but it starts regenerating. So it's starting to put some energy back into the, the battery at the back of the car, so we can use that for acceleration uh, later on. Now, if I want to get more regeneration, I can use these paddles uh, behind the steering wheel. So all I do is actually on pull those, it gives me one little down arrow, and then if I pull on the, the, the minus, it gives me more uh, regeneration, so minus is minus speed. So now if I back off the accelerator, it'll slow down even more. So we've got four levels and off. And this is down to personal driver taste. So it might be that as you're driving along around the town, you might have it on level four, and that's gonna give you a reasonable amount of deceleration. And that's, again, charging the batteries up, not using the physical brakes, just using the motor to regenerate the power for you. If you're on the motorway, you might not want any extra regeneration at all, because you just want to, as you lift off, continue your momentum. So the choice is yours, and you can use these paddles. 
Now, I haven't mentioned the drive mode yet, so if you've had a Honda before, you're probably used to uh, comfort mode. Uh, we've got, if we push it forwards, we've got sport, and if we pull it back from our normal position, you'd get econ. So we've had those before. And I'm going to come back to these in a moment as well. But if I'm in sport mode, um, just pop that back into sport. Oops. Just pop that back into sport, and I pull my paddle, you'll see a little M comes to the side of the D. So that memorizes the amount of regenerative braking you're going to get. And every time I come off the accelerator, it's going to give me that level of regeneration. In drive mode, when you pull the paddles, it will memorise the uh, the regeneration level for a few seconds, and then it will put you back into the, the normal level. So again, as a driver, you can interact with that system as much or as little as you want to. So I mentioned the drive modes. We've got our normal, we've got sport, we've got econ, but we have a brand new one as well. So if we push it all the way up, you get individual. Now this allows you, as the driver, to choose how you want the system to work. So you could have a combination of some of the econ features and some of the sport features in your own personal setting. First impressions of this drive, um, absolutely tremendous. So we're going fairly steady, we're just doing about 30 miles an hour, but you can feel a nice weighting to the steering. I've got fantastic visibility all the way around, even on this sort of slightly rainy day, but I've got great forwards, rearwards vision, absolutely mega. Um, too slow to be feeling the differences with the wider track and the longer wheelbase, but I know as I you know, pick up the pace a little bit, when I'm on the, the public roads, maybe on a, a motorway, a nice winding country road or something, I'm really going to get that nice feedback from this revised suspension. So we mentioned regenerative braking using the, the paddles when we lift off the accelerator. Of course, you're going to get some regeneration when you use your foot brake as well. So for that first amount of travel, it's actually using the electric motor to slow the car down. And again, it harnesses that energy so that you can use that at a later date for acceleration. And it's going to improve your fuel economy. So just that light little press on the brake pedals, it's slowing me down and it's using those motors. Again, really, really clever system that we've got in our EHEV system here, our two motor hybrid system on the new Civic. Added to the visual space that we've got around us, so you know the, the lower glass level, the better vision out of the, the, the windscreen at the front with these A-pillars uh, pulled a little bit back towards the, uh, the base there, so it gives me fantastic vision. We know this is a really practical car. I've got loads of room, my rear seat passengers, they've got loads of room, and probably more importantly to them, they've got rear ventilation, they've got USBs, two in fact at the back, that are illuminated around the sockets, so I can find them really nice and easily. So when we get to where we're going, of course, we're probably going to be putting something into the boot or taking something out of the boot. And with 404 or 410 litres uh, space inside there, depending which model you go for, we know we're going to have ample room. We know our two motor hybrid system has certainly got the pace. So delivering a 0 to 62 time in as little as 7.8 seconds, and we can equally have um, miles per gallon up to 60.1. Of course, this depends on which model you go for, because there are some different wheel sizes. But it's not all about how quickly you can get somewhere. It's not all about you know those miles per gallon. Let's have a think about some of these extra features that we've got. So you may well be familiar with Honda Sensing. We have a multi-purpose camera at the top, which now has a wider uh, field of vision than it had before, and that's going to look for other road users. It's going to look for the painted lines on the road. It can help keep us centered. We've got autonomous braking. That's going to help, again, keep us nice and safe on the road, and it will help our adaptive cruise control, whereby you know, we set our speed to 70, but if the car in front's only doing 50, it will keep us at that 50 mile an hour until the car in front speeds up or we cancel it, and we can choose the time gap between us and that vehicle ahead. And these are standard on all three grades, adaptive cruise control and lane keeping assist. These can now operate from zero miles an hour, and this can give us a new feature called Traffic Jam Assist. So we can have steering assistance and the ability for adaptive cruise control to get us up to our desired speed of maybe on a motorway, 70 miles an hour, right down to zero if we encountered a traffic jam, and both can work together. So we hit some traffic on the, the motorway, and it's actually going to give me a little bit of steering assistance because it can still see the painted uh, line markings, and it slowed me down. And if the traffic moves again within sort of five seconds or so, it'll start me back up again. Over that time, a little icon comes up on the screen saying stopped. 
then all I need to do to get going again is either push up on this little tab here for resume or give it a little press on the accelerator. So again, taking some of that, um, that fatigue that's going to be created by traffic jams and the stress, it takes that away for you. So another little feature, you can choose to use that or not, entirely up to you. You are in control of all of these systems, but they're there just to make your life that little bit easier and safer. If, for instance, I didn't want to use Traffic Jam Assist because I didn't want Lane Keeping Assist on or Adaptive Cruise Control, my complete choice. But one thing I would do in that instance is pop on Brake Hold. Simple press of the button will give me a notification on the dashboard that that system is active. It says Brake Hold and a green icon on there for me. And what that does is exactly what you'd imagine. It holds the brakes on. So now I'm just going to slow down using my uh, brakes. We come down to zero miles now. We've stopped. And then what's going to happen if I take my foot off the brake, it actually holds the brake pressure on for as long as I need it to. So then, as soon as whatever's cleared in front, we're at a junction or whatever, because I'm not going to roll back or anything like that, all I do, accelerate away, and we're good to go again. Again, this is something that is user selectable. You don't have to have it on, but if you want to, as long as you've got your, your seatbelt on, press the brake hold button and you can activate that for you. So some of the information that I've got visible for me, I've got a lovely 10.2-inch uh, TFT screen in front of me um, because I'm in the advanced model, as I might have mentioned. And I've got my power meter on the left, I've got my speed on the right, and I can scroll through different things in each of those. So I've got navigation, turn-by-turn uh, -turn signals on the, on the right, uh, I've got navigation there, I can have my average uh, trip journey information, those kind of things. But I can equally get that up here as well on the centre 9-inch screen. So we can see at the moment on my current drive, we've got an impressive uh, 67.8 to the gallon there. I'm doing quite well, bit of an eco challenge to myself there. I can see what range we've got from the fuel that's in, and right in the centre we can see I'm in hybrid at the moment. So we can see the indication of the battery at the back there, and if we've got power coming from the petrol engine, or if we've got it purely coming from the battery, as we have now, we're driving along 100% in electric. If I put my foot down and accelerate a little bit, you'll see that the petrol engine starts up and that's to start generating a little bit more acceleration from the electric motor to store some energy into the battery there. And already we've gone back into uh, into EV. So a nice little bit of information, but of course, you, know, you might not want that up. You might want your CarPlay on there, for instance. So you can pop in whatever features you want on there. You maybe go to your your own chosen navigation if that's what you wanted to rather than the cars um, or we can just go back home again. On the meter on the left hand side you operate that and scroll through with this little thumb wheel on the left hand side so you could choose if you wanted your phone information, uh, if you wanted to go to FM or DAB or your car play or if you've got something Bluetooth connected just press it on there and it would go to that particular music source for you and of course in this car that's going to be playing through my 12 speaker Bose system. We're just starting to get a little bit more uh, drizzle coming through, so I'm just going to put my uh, wipers into uh, auto, and that's going to take care of my vision for me. And of course, I can adjust how sensitive I want that with this little uh, rotational uh, wheel halfway through. Um, the, uh, the stalk here, I think halfway is good on there for me. That's perfect. So again, it will differ from vehicle to vehicle. So um, on this particular model, my petrol gauge is on the right-hand side, and the energy level in my battery is on the left-hand side. Uh, as I say, that it'll be in different places on the Elegance and the Sport, but you'll have access to that information on the, uh, the smaller TFT screen as well. So we've got good vision and good visibility out of that front windscreen because my wipers are set to auto, but let's imagine I've got a slightly dirty windscreen, a little bit of mud's been thrown up or something like that, and I'm just going to demonstrate our Smart Clear wiper system. So the washer jets are actually above the wiper blade and they will put windscreen washer fluid above the, uh, the wipers as they come up, not on the way down, and that uses 40% less water and as you can see gives crystal clear vision once it's actually gone through its process of cleaning the screen for us. Down this road, as I mentioned, it is a private road, we're not going to get anything coming the opposite way, we're not going to get anything overtaking us. However, 
If we did in the real world and we uh, had something in our blind spot, we'd get the little indicator in the door mirror that would illuminate to tell us there's something there, to, to watch out for it, if it was in our blind spot, of course. And if I indicated, let's imagine there's a, there's a car to my right hand side, I haven't actually seen it, and I put my indicator on to show my intention of moving over the lane, it would not only be illuminated, it'd start flashing and beeping at me to really warn me, you know, watch out Duncan, there's something to your right, maybe stay in this lane for a little bit longer. Of course, the same would work if I was pulling back into my lane with the left indicator. And that is standard on all three grades of Civic. Because we have blind spot information as standard, that also means we have cross traffic monitor as well. So they use the same radars that are at the back of the car. So if I pulled into a parking space at the supermarket and I've got a big panel van parked either side of me, I'm going to really struggle to see out of my side windows when I reverse out. And those radars are going to be looking as I select reverse, they're going to be seeing if anything's going to cross my path behind me. And it's going to warn me on the screen in front just to stay where I am for a moment, wait, and then do my reversing maneuver. So I turned the temperature up a little bit in here before and it's starting to get nice and warm. I think uh, maybe a little too warm. So we've got these nice little dials down here which have got a real nice click to them and this knurled uh, finish just on the outside. So physical buttons and then the digital display which is a really nice combo. Um, this is synchronised at the moment so whatever temperature I set it to that's what my passenger gets as well. However if we turn the sync off my passenger could have 18 degrees and I can have 21 perfect stops any of those related arguments then I can choose well do I want you know fresh air coming in which I have or recirculate uh, the mode rear screen heater front screen heater and if we just want the blower rather than air conditioning now on a day like today although yeah, a little bit of rain coming down it's not winter but I've got my heated seats in here as well which is again a really nice feature to have on this, uh, this particular car, very, very good indeed. So below that, I've got my USBs, so I can have my one for my Android Auto if I wanted to, to use that through the system uh, there, or just simply charging something. I've got my wireless charger here for my, my particular phone, an iPhone, so I can pop that on there, and CarPlay is wireless in this car as well, which is another really nice feature. Then when we get to our destination, what are we going to do? Well, obviously, we're going to pull up. So when we pull up, we're we'll just park it along the side here, all good. And then foot's on the foot brake, press the P button. That's going to put the, if you like, the transmission into park, pull on the parking brake, and then the power button is gonna turn it off. So there we are then folks. Hope you've enjoyed that as much as I have and that we've shown you how it is the driver's hybrid and we've also we've got those two sides to Civic. Now I'm sure of course you want to make up your own mind. These are just my opinions, my thoughts on the car. So please contact your local dealer. They'll be delighted to book you in for a test drive at your convenience so you can make your own minds up on this excellent new car. Thanks for watching folks. Take care.